I may not agree with everything the man that wrote this quote said, wrote, or did. This is perhaps the most articulate and precise quote ever written, describing the utter incompatibility of Marxism as it relates to nature. I consider it foolish and insane to disobey the eternal power of nature, and humans that have the audacity to challenge her omnipotence generally experience her wrath in full force. Marxism denies the natural order of things. It attempts to pervert and destroy everything that is powerful and virtuous in the world, simultaneously subverting the naturally successful with the natural failures. In a state of nature, only the strong, intelligent, beautiful, and steadfast survive and reproduce, endowing the same traits and mannerisms to their posterity. Hierarchical structures exist in nature and therefore exist in human society as well. There are hundreds of millions of years of evolutionary history that dictate this. It is inevitable that human beings will organize themselves into hierarchical structures. To fight this truth is utterly futile. Hierarchical structures have nothing at all to do with socio-cultural construction, as cultural Marxists claim. In the decadence of the postmodern Western world, humanity has vainly and thoughtlessly assumed that it has conquered the omnipotence of eternal nature. As a result, an increasingly conspicuous and extensive effort of contemptuous besiegement is being effectuated upon naturally empowered traditional groups and identities by artificially empowered abnormal groups and identities. This attack can be seen in the realms of race, culture, politics, economics, lifestyle, and just about every other aspect of human existence one can observe. Abnormal groups, empowered only by the artificial selection of modern decadence, want to subvert and destroy empowered traditional groups and identities, which have received their natural place of dominance in our societies through thousands of years of cultural tradition and evolution, throughout a period when humans were unquestionably more beholden to the natural selection of eternal nature. With clear exceptions which I will elaborate upon, the paradigm of these adversarial forces of humanity can be observed as a general dichotomy within the realm of political allegiances. In other words, in the postmodern world, there is a general tendency of the naturally empowered traditional groups and identities to support rightist politics, while the artificially empowered abnormal groups and identities support leftist politics. Cultural Marxism has been embraced so willingly by the left because it seeks to place traditionally and naturally non-dominant groups and identities into power over traditionally and naturally dominant groups and identities in the same framework of oppressor versus oppressed that was found in the classical Marxist bourgeoisie versus proletariat class struggle dichotomy. Once upon a time, the divergent left only fought for social liberty. Now they fight to assume power over the norms of society, which they fail to realize are in fact the commands of eternal nature. In general terms, these are the modern struggles that occur between conflicting groups and identities in the West, which exemplify this dichotomy. Men versus women. Nature has generally made human societies patriarchal, including the West. Western feminism at first sought for equality of opportunity, and once achieved, it did not lead to the equality of outcome that they expected. This is because of biological differences in the way men and women think, feel, act, lead, and produce when operating under their own free will. But instead of accepting this natural phenomenon, and the inherent differences between the sexes. Feminists created a Marxist dichotomy wherein men are the oppressors and women the oppressed. Modern feminism is now generally just thinly veiled cultural Marxist misandry. The voting data proves that men are more likely to vote for rightists and women are more likely to vote for leftists. 
In the 2016 U.S. presidential election, Donald Trump won the male vote by 12 points. Hillary Clinton won the female vote by 12 points. The 2017 British general election, more men voted conservative and more women voted for the leftist Labour Party. Two out of the three voters for the right-wing UK Independence Party were male. In the 2016 Austrian presidential election, there was a clear right-left split between men and women, as well as in the 2017 legislative elections. In Germany, the Nationalist Alternative for Deutschland Party garnered twice as many male votes as it did female votes in the 2017 federal elections. Females also carried leftist Justin Trudeau to victory in the 2015 Canadian federal election, while the majority of Canadian males voted for conservative Stephen Harper. Whites versus non-whites. Cultural Marxists contend that race is a social construct and means nothing biologically. However, biological differences in race are clear to anyone with a shred of intellectual honesty and it's backed up by irrefutable scientific evidence. These average differences are physical, intellectual, psychological, and behavioral in nature, just to name a few. And natural biological differences among races have propelled certain racial groups into positions of higher average success, wealth, productiveness, education, and health. Whites in particular have risen to a high level of average prominence, as well as other non-white groups like Jews and East Asians. These groups are naturally more successful than other groups. It is not a societal phenomenon. And so these historically successful groups, the majority of which are white, are painted as the oppressors, while the historically unsuccessful groups are painted as the oppressed within the cultural Marxist racial dichotomy. The resentment of non-whites regarding their natural lack of success politically manifests itself in their tendency to vote for politicians that espouse principles of neo-Marxist social engineering, which oppresses naturally successful racial groups in favor of naturally unsuccessful racial groups. In the 2017 British general election, 73% of ethnic minorities voted for the leftist Labour Party. In the 2016 US presidential election, ethnic minorities voted overwhelmingly for the left. Ethnic minorities also carried leftist Justin Trudeau to victory in the 2015 Canadian federal election. In Germany, 76% of Turks, the largest ethnic minority in that country, voted for socialist and leftist parties in the 2013 German federal elections. Heterosexuals to include the gender normative versus non-heterosexuals to include the gender confused. Non-heterosexuals and the gender confused have long been instrumental in the left's cultural war against everything that is traditional and natural. The leftist prostration to gay degeneracy and public depravity has emboldened this group to the point of insanity, and the Marxist overtones of the gay rights movement has inspired gays to obsess over their sexuality to the point of it becoming the focal point of their entire identity. In bitter resentment of the reality that society is naturally majority heterosexual, and by default, the world naturally heteronormative, in combination with their status as an abnormal and degenerate minority, they have waged war against everything that is traditional and natural in society. In a state of nature, non-heterosexuals and the gender confused would not reproduce and proliferate the human species. This is why there is little to no homosexual tendency in the natural world, nor is there gender confusion among any of the millions of other species in the natural world. If it were not for modern technology and unnatural forms of conception, gays would not have children of their own. In all homosexual society with no modern technology would die out within a couple of generations. Luckily for them, the left celebrates everything that is unnatural, 
and gays have therefore been loyal to the left, to the tune of 79% of non-heterosexuals voting for leftist parties in the 2016 United States presidential election. A non-heterosexual or gender-confused person would be far less likely to gain any position of power within any hierarchical structure in a state of nature. However, the left has endorsed them for positions of power they would likely never have achieved otherwise. Elders versus Youth Old is synonymous with mature, while young is synonymous with immature. Wise versus naive, rational versus irrational, logically driven versus emotionally driven, practical versus ideal, right versus left. In Western society, the older the person, the more likely they are to be on the right, and understandably. After a person has toiled their entire life and deferred their gratification for decades so that they can retire comfortably, they seldom have a desire to financially sustain the indolent, decadent, and fraudulent factions of society. Even in primitive societies of yesteryear, elders were venerated and held high status within social hierarchies for their wisdom and experience. But the sagacity of the elderly has been insolently and foolishly painted as a nuisance by the modern left, as the wisdom of the elderly presents an obstacle in the left's malevolent scheme to overthrow the natural order of society. 61% of Brits over the age of 65 voted to leave the EU, while 75% of Brits under the age of 25 voted to remain. In the 2017 UK federal election, the leftist Labour Party carried a 44-point lead amongst voters under 25, while carrying a deficit of 43 points among voters aged 65 and over. In the 2016 United States presidential election, there was a clear age divide between the leftist and the rightist candidates. However, the disenfranchised youth in many Western countries are beginning to see through the empty promises of the leftist elite, and the youth are flocking to populist and nationalist causes, most notably in France, Germany, and the United States. Looking past typical identity groups, we can see the right-left split in several other dichotomous frameworks. The attractive versus the unattractive. Studies have shown that people on the right are in general more physically attractive than people on the left, something rightists have known for years. The physically strong and fit versus the physically weak and obese. Studies have shown that people on the right are in general more physically strong than people on the left. In general, rightists tend to train and go to the gym more often than people on the left something rightists have known for years. Virile versus impotent. Studies have shown that men on the left are more likely to be deficient in testosterone, and right-wing couples in general have a better sex life, something rightists have known for years. This is not to say that all rightists out there are Mr. and Mrs. Universe. This means that rightists are the ones who are not resentful that there is a Mr. and Mrs. Universe. And instead of holding bitterness that hierarchies naturally exist within human societies, rightists accept the nature of society as it is, and instead strive to become the best possible version of themselves, while leftists deny the nature of society and strive to change the very definition of beauty and strength so that they, and those that they coddle and enable, can somehow unnaturally fit into that definition, which has not been written by society, but has been written by eternal nature itself. The sane versus the mentally ill. Studies have shown that leftists are more likely to be mentally ill than rightists, a fact which shocks no rightists whatsoever. The reason for this is clear. Mental illness affects the most mentally and emotionally unstable groups in our society, such as non-heterosexuals, including the gender-confused, 
women, and young adults, all of whom vote majority leftist. A hideous, fat, mentally ill black lesbian will naturally be resentful of a handsome, fit, sane, white heterosexual male. So it is only natural that the former is instinctively drawn to Marxist deconstructionist theories. Those with mental illnesses are like many other leftist groups to some extent, in that they are generally resentful that they have problems and others of sound mind and soul do not. Anxiety disorders are the most common mental illness in the United States, affecting 40 million American adults. Generalized anxiety disorder affects 6.8 million American adults, and American women are twice as likely to be affected as American men. Panic disorder affects 6 million American adults, and American women are twice as likely to be affected as American men. Major depressive disorder affects 16.1 million American adults, the majority of which are women. Eating disorders are also a common mental illness, and young women make up 85 to 95 percent of Americans with anorexia or bulimia. Unsurprisingly, non-heterosexuals and the gender confused are more likely to suffer from mental illness. In both men and women, gays are twice as likely to have a mental illness, and bisexuals are three times as likely to have a mental illness in comparison to heterosexual people. Going back full circle to the classical Marxist bourgeoisie proletariat class dichotomy, the haves versus the have-nots, the productive classes versus the unproductive classes. In general, the more productive class has historically gravitated towards the right, and understandably. The right seeks to preserve hierarchies that organically occur within societies, as the intelligent, industrious, and virtuous naturally rise to the top by making sacrifices and deferring their gratification to their future and the future of their posterity. The left supports the wrongful theft and redistribution of the earnings of these naturally successful groups to be applied to the subsidization of the generally slothful, unproductive, and parasitic class, enabling these societal burdens to continue this behavior instead of forcing them to produce and provide for the basics of their own necessity. Naturally, the productive classes would be adverse to this, but as the Marxists realized that they had no chance of overthrowing Western society through an economic struggle, they focused instead on culture. The left has been winning that cultural war for decades, and now the result of that, laughably, is that the Western bourgeoisie has come to support Marxist dogma and has built a veritable army of champagne socialists, half-baked pseudo-intellectuals, virtue signaling celebrities, media charlatans, and crooked government officials who preach about borderless states and economic equality from the luxury of their fortified mansions and gated communities. These elitists, driven by power, not empathy or goodwill, seek positions of influence and encourage Marxist and welfareist policies so that they might create a reliable, sheep-tier victim class voting block, a financially dependent, generationally impoverished and low IQ amalgamation of perpetually disenchanted identity groups vying for the fictional dream that is equality of outcome. In the process of attempting to overthrow the eternal command of nature, these cultural Marxists gain enormous wealth, status, and power. Careers and fortunes are made in the industry of grievance, and the urbanites and globalists have taken note. For these unscrupulous elites, it is all about power, money, and status not effectuating social change or creating some fanciful utopia for the poor. They profit from strife, division, and discontent. The educational system in Western countries, the greatest influence on the minds of young Westerners, has been completely overrun 
by critical theory peddling neo-Marxist educators, administrators, and their corrupt unions, and thus the quote-unquote educated who are in reality the indoctrinated vote for the left en masse. However, the tides are turning. The natural reaction to the elitist migration to the left has been that the workers, the proletariat, those without educational qualifications, the very people whose struggle the left has always claimed to represent, are moving to the nationalist right in droves. In the United Kingdom, the Conservative and UK Independence parties have recently found their strongest base in the working class that hold no college degree. In France, the political stronghold of the Front National is the working class far north region of the country that has been devastated by globalism, high unemployment, and mass unfettered immigration. In Germany, the overwhelming majority of Alternative for Deutschland voters are working class Germans from the former Communist East, formerly a stronghold of the Social Democrats. And in the United States, lower and working class whites remain loyal to the right despite the incentive of welfare and government handouts promised to them by the left. And so, to which camp will you subscribe? Will you support those who attempt to subvert the productive, beautiful, strong, healthy, rational, sane, traditional, wise, lawful, and moral among us, and replace us with the slothful, unsightly, weak, indisposed, nonsensical, insane, avant-garde, ignorant, criminal, and degenerate? Will you defend those that indulge and enable these wretches for their own selfish desire for control or self-fulfillment? Or will you fly the banner of the virtuous? Will you join those who accept the power of eternal mother nature and are not embittered by her commands? Those who are truly and naturally superior need only to exist among others and present themselves in their authentic form. Thereafter, their natural place in the world in comparison to others will become objectively evident and only deniable to those with envy, deceit, and spiteful ill will in their hearts. Perhaps the greatest truth ever written about Marxism has been on paper for over 90 years and it is even more true and apparent today than it has ever been. Marxism rejects the aristocratic principle of nature and replaces the eternal privilege of power and strength by the mass of numbers and their dead weight. Eternal nature inexorably avenges the infringement of her commands.